Good evening, class. Hi, this is Malochka. And before we get started with the tutorial, I'm going to show you some pretty pictures by me while I explain my purpose in creating this video. I was doing some simple post work on some pictures for a web comic by a friend of mine. He was interested in learning how to do the post work himself, and so I assured him that there were lots and lots of great tutorials out there on the web that would help him get started. After saying that, I looked around and, to my surprise, I could not find any beginner level post working tutorials. Now, I did find lots and lots of marvelous tutorials, however, the vast majority of them were for advanced artists interested in creating detailed images to be turned into posters or prints. When you're working on a webcomic like my friend or illustrations for a fanfic website like I do, you're working with uh, lots and lots of pictures. Most of these pictures are relatively small, under a thousand pixels high or wide. And usually you don't want to spend eight hours creating realistic nose hair on each one of them, which is not to knock the tutorial that I saw that showed how to create realistic nose hair. I thought it was really wonderful. Uh, so anyway, I decided to put together this quick and dirty video to introduce a beginner to some very basic post-work image enhancement techniques that uh, you might want to use just to get you started here. Good evening, class. I have chosen a portrait to work with in this demonstration. I think it's a really pretty picture by itself, but we're going to make it a lot nicer. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and add some additional highlights to add dimension to the image. Um, oh, oh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix a funny place on her neck. I just wanted to show you how to do this. This is something I have to do a lot of. Uh, select the area, pick the um, smudge tool, and now I'm just going to smudge that away. Hooray! Instant plastic surgery. And now I'm choosing the dodge tool, which goes through and um, makes whatever it touches lighter. I've chosen a pretty big tool to start out with. I choose the biggest tool I'm going to be working with. And this one is very large. I'm going through and picking places where the image uh, light seems to be hitting the image and enhancing those highlights particularly working with the hair. We like to see nice shiny bright hair. I've gone down uh, going down a size on the dodge tool and going through and adding uh, defining this uh, the highlights a little bit more highlighting inside the highlights and getting to a few areas that were too small to uh, touch with the larger dodge tool as you see here I am highlighting not with the uh, the brightest point on the on her clothes but I'm highlighting slightly above it to bring out the uh, the red of her uniform that she's wearing there. Now going in again with a still smaller tool, highlighting again within the highlights. Just going through and adding a little extra interest to a few spots. And there we have a nicely highlighted image. Now on to something that I find really adds a lot of interest to portraits, my sparkling eye technique. What I do here is I take the pencil and add tiny one pixel white dots to um, the eyes. I'm going to go through now and blur them a little bit so they won't look just like little white squares and then taking a very tiny version of the dodge tool I'm highlighting a little bit in the bottom of the iris and over onto the white of the eyes. 
And while I'm down here, I'm going to add a little bit of highlight to the lips. You can unfortunately see that her lipstick and her nail polish do not match, which I, I think is a crime in parts of the South. Good evening, class. Good evening, class. Now we're going to do some uh, overall enhancement of the entire image. For the first step, you need to duplicate your base layer over in the Layers menu. And now you're going to turn up the saturation in this layer. I'm turning it way up here. It doesn't necessarily matter how much. Just turn it up. Whatever things you think is good. And now we're going to do the same thing with the contrast. We're going to create a nice contrasty image. Again, just some. It's a little different for, for every image. And now we're going to put a Gaussian blur on the whole thing. Like, oh, it was looking good, and now you're messing it up. Don't worry. Now we're going to change the transparency to the blending model to soft light. See, there's before, after, before, after. Reselecting the background image. I'm going to go through now and turn up both the brightness and the contrast to bring out some of the uh, parts of the image that were obscured. We put on this glamour layer. I'm now going to go to the sharpen menu and use unsharp mask to uh, bring out some of the detail. And again, before, after, before, after. Very pretty. So this is what our image is looking like now. Uh, we've done this step to bring out the colors in the image, but also to soften up the appearance a little. One of the things that makes CGI renders look unrealistic is the edges tend to be a little too sharp, a little too clear. And so with this technique, you bring some more softness, a more realistic look to the image. Good evening, class. Good evening, class. Good evening, class. What we're going to do now is to automate this whole process. Ooh, very impressive. Now I'm going to the Actions menu and I'm going to pull up my action. That uh, and an action is just a macro where you record all the steps. So that fast, I have done all the steps that I did in the previous steps. And I'm going back to the background, and I'm going to do the background adjustments to uh, brightness and contrast that I did before. So just that quickly, just in one button, you can do one of these macros, create one of these macros that will automate a process, and then go in and do whatever adjustments you need to do. There you go. Just to be cute, I'm going to go through and show you another action. This is the one I use to put a frame around my picture. Very simple. All I do is uh, enlarge the canvas and uh, use the layer, layer properties function to put a line all the way around it. Even going to sign my name, which I have uh, is made into a brush. You need to flatten the image before saving. It will not save as a JPEG unless you flatten before saving, which we're going to do now. If you don't flatten it, it will try to uh, save as PSD. And there we go. Beautiful image. Now you can see the two images side by side, before and after. Really, you've just enhanced the render a little bit. Gone through and done a couple things to bring out the color. Now we're going to go through the steps. Our before, highlighting, 
adding the special sparkling eyes technique, image enhancement, and there we go. I hope this at least encourages you to find a graphics program and experiment, uh, experiment a little bit and see what you can do to make your already very beautiful renders from a CGI graphics program even better. All right, see you next time. Good evening, class. Good evening, class. Good evening, class. Good evening, class.